Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful drawing community. In this video, we're going to learn how to draw a monster relief in Procreate. So open up the app and let's get started. So as usual, the first thing to do after opening up Procreate, of course, is to create a new canvas. And the size of this canvas is totally up to you and it depends on your own project. If you're new to digital art, I have a video about how to pick a canvas size, so you can definitely go ahead and watch this, it will be linked in the description below. Otherwise, these are the dimensions of my canvas, just for reference. But I'm gonna be honest, the only reason I'm using this size is because I am drawing in a pre-textured file, as you can see here, that has a watercolor paper textured to it. And that's really, again, the only reason I am using this canvas size. That being said, if you want to check out this pre-textured file, it is also linked in the description below, but it is totally optional for this tutorial. No matter which canvas size you're using, go ahead and create a new layer, and you're going to rename this layer to Sketch. So for this, we're going to start by creating a really quick sketch, nothing too complicated because it's not going to be the final product anyway. And for the sketch, you can pick whichever color you want. I like sketching with a just like a gray. <laughs> I don't know, but again, you could sketch with a yellow if, if you felt like it. And for this tutorial, I'm always going to be suggesting two different brushes. So one brush is always going to be a free brush that just comes with Procreate. And the other one is going to be from my Ultimate watercolor brushes. And these are going to be just if you want to get a more professional result. So if you really want to bring your art to the next level. If you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below. And there is always a special promo code just for the YouTube people. So if you don't have the watercolor brushes, you can just go ahead and in the sketching panel, select the HB pencil. Otherwise, you can pick the coloring pencil again that comes with the watercolor brushes. For the sketch, honestly, it really doesn't matter that much. And I'm going to start by sketching the leaf pointing upwards. I know in the example it's pointing downwards, but I don't know, it's just easier for me that way. So I highly recommend that you do the same. And for the leaf, honestly, you're going to draw this rounded triangle shape and then split it down the middle to have this kind of uh, leaf vein in the center. And on the bottom, you're going to draw this inverted V. We're then gonna go in and sketch the veins on both sides of our leaf. And you can see here, I'm being really quick, really loose. I have a bunch of lines all over the place and I'm not erasing. And I encourage you to do the same because this sketch, like I was saying, is not gonna be in the final result anyway. So just map out roughly your illustration and that's going to be more than enough trust me now we're going to turn this leaf into a monstera and to do that we need to add fenestration on the leaf so kind of the swiss cheese feel of it <laughs> so on all our vein we are actually going to go and draw these open shapes there is no rule on how they need to be open uh, it depends on one leaf to the other on one type of monstera to the other as well but what I quite like to do is kind of have some fully open spots and some spots where the end kind of overlap. And I'm not sure that makes a whole lot of sense what I'm saying right now, but you can see here really well in the example, um, the two ends of the opening leaf <laughs> um, are getting on top of each other basically. So sometimes the opening goes from the outside of the leaf, like the edge of the leaf, right to the center, and sometimes kind of the points overlap, basically. <laughs> and you can also have some little holes, so like when the fenestration doesn't go all the way to the vein, sometimes it kind of creates these little Swiss cheese holes. <laughs> We're also going to go ahead and tweak the V shape a little bit. So instead of being a pointy V, you're actually going to turn it into an S curve. So instead of looking like a triangle, you're gonna get something that is a bit more uh, soft and round and it looks more like an actual plant. <laughs> now, if you want to reposition your leaf, you can use the arrow tool and then just use your fingers to move it around. Again, also kind of distort the shape a little bit. So if you use this um, yellow handle, you can move the bounding box and then using distort, you can kind of change the shape if you want. That is totally, you know, optional, of course. So once you have your sketch, go ahead and in your layer panel, you're gonna click on the little N 
And then you're going to change the blending mode to multiply and lower the opacity of your layer until you can just barely see your sketch. So you can experiment with that, but I mean, honestly, again, it doesn't matter that much. The sketch, not that important. What is important though is the actual color that we're going to draw. So to do that, go ahead and create a new layer, put it below the sketch and rename it to Leaf or Monstera or whatever you want. <laughs> so for this, I like going with a green, <laughs> no surprise here, but that is pretty much um, in the middle of this uh, color picker tool. So nothing too dark, nothing too saturated, but also nothing too light or desaturated, just kind of perfectly in the middle. So the free brush you might want to use for this would be the hard brush in the airbrushing panel. But look at this, you would go ahead and with this tool here, you would lower the opacity of the brush and you can experiment with how much. Um, but as you can see now, that allows you to have kind of an overlapping effect in your color. Obviously you won't have any watercolor texture, but it's definitely better than nothing. If you do have the watercolor brushes, however, go ahead and use the dark edges watercolor. And what we're going to do here is we're going to draw and color in section by section. So with brushes that are either watercolor brushes or brushes with transparency, every time you lift your pencil, it kind of resets the color and it's going to create an overlay on parts that you overlap. <laughs> so here, that's why we're doing it. First of all, section in section, because drawing the entire leaf all at once without lifting the pencil would be really, really hard. But it's also why we're not just drawing the outlines and then filling it in, for example, with color fill, because then we wouldn't be having the same color on the outline because we would have some transparency and textures as on the inside, which would just be a solid color. So this is kind of the first step also where we're going to be building some of this watercolor effect, no matter the brush you're using, because you can see even though we're drawing section by section, we're actually creating some sort of overlays. Right now they look really terrible, but don't worry about it. Later we're going to use that to our advantage to create again this watercolor effect. And just so that the tutorial doesn't last forever, I'm actually going to do the other half off camera. So feel free to pause the video here and take all the time you need to just color in your shape. Great. So once you have something that looks a little bit like this, we can actually go ahead and hide the sketch layer because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to start building on this watercolor effect. So if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and use the basic watercolor. Otherwise you can just keep the same brush that you were using before. And with the same color, all we're going to do is we're going to layer and create some overlap on some parts of the leaf. So basically we're kind of mimicking pigments stacking on top of each other uh, like they would with real watercolor. And there's really no rule here. Basically you just want to uh, go over some spots two, three, four times so that you can have a darker color on that area and leave some other spots as they were um, from the last step basically and trust me this is probably going to look crazy you can see here on my screen it's all patchy it looks digital that's fine because in the next step we're going to blend everything in and it's going to look good so right now just focus on adding color variation blocks of darker grains and that's really it don't worry about the edges don't worry about the overlaps that's fine <laughs> you're gonna get something that almost looks like you know the camo 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 pattern the army pattern <laughs> Uh, and that, that's what you want. But now we're going to actually go in and blend the weird digital edges. And so to do that, you can use the smudge tool, sing it to either the soft brush or the medium brush. If you have the watercolor brushes, however, you can set your paint brush to the water blender. And the water blender, basically what it does is similar to the smudge tool, just a little bit more uh, watercolor E. <laughs> and so it allows you to blend your colors kind of like you were dropping some water on some real watercolor. Uh, but basically no matter the tool you're using here, all you want to do is go over your edges that look weird so that they get all blended and beautiful. But be careful, you don't want to blend in the actual edges of your leaf because then it's going to be just like a cloud looking fluffy leaf that's not what we want we want the actual edges of the leaf to stay crisp and nice but everything that is inside the color we want to be blended in watercolor e and this step you know it might take a while uh, there's really there's no rush here you want to create these masses of more pigmented color 
and masses of more diluted color. So play, play around, experiment, and you can even go back with your, you know, your actual paintbrush and add more color and go back and forth and blend them in until you get some sort of a patchy watercolor feel. And once you have something that you're happy with, we're going to move on and add a little bit more details to bring it to life. The first details we're going to add are actually details we've been talking about from the start, so the veins. And to draw the veins, you actually want them to be lighter than the leaf. But watercolor brushes or brushes that have a transparency to them don't do super well with white. So what I like to do is just create a mask and selecting the mask, also selecting my eraser. Now you see everything that you erase on this mask is going to look white, but you can also see that it is not actually erasing the actual leaf color. So that's a nice way of preserving the work you've done so far is to kind of erasing on a mask to make sure that you don't lose all your hard work. And with your mask in place, you're just going to go in and erase the veins. So starting with the middle one and then going in and drawing the secondary one, I guess. <laughs> and to do that, you don't want them to be perfectly straight. As you can see here, you're going to start in a curve that's going to go upwards. So something a little bit like this. And really, you're just going to do that all over your leaf. Now guys, if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and comment the word leaf below. I know it sounds crazy, but it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which in turn helped me create better tutorials for you. And it's also really cool because you guys know me, but I don't know you. So whenever you leave a comment, I get to see either your username or your real name, or sometimes even a picture. And it's just really great to see the wonderful drawing community that we're building here on this channel. So go ahead and comment the word leaf and we'll keep going. One little pro tip for you, when you have all your little veins like this, you can kind of zoom in and add a little bit more thickness in the area where the veins connect with kind of the center of the leaf. That's just going to make everything look a little bit better and it's super easy. Another super easy thing that's going to help make everything better is adding some color variation because right now our leaf is super flat. And to do that, I have a fun trick. I think you're gonna like it. If you've watched my videos before it, you know it. Uh, but we're going to go and select the leaf layer, just tapping on it. And then with the selection tool, making sure it is set to freehand, you're going to draw the most random shape you can think of. So something like this. <laughs> and then you're gonna feather your selection somewhere between 20 and 30%. And then you're going to open the adjustment panel, select hue saturation and brightness to the entire layer. And then you're going to be able to play with the hue. As you can see here, that's going to add a lot of color variation, some really nice gradients super easily. So for this, there's no rule. Again, you can pick whichever settings you want. I'm actually going to make my secondary color a little bit more blue. So I'm shifting my hue towards the right. And you might want to up the saturation and lower the brightness or up the brightness. You can play with those other settings uh, until you get something that you like. And as you can see in just a few seconds, we completely transformed our leaf. And you can do the step as many times as you want. I like to go in at least two times. The second time you're gonna do, again, a freehand selection, but this one is going to be more normal and mostly just around the top of the leaf. You're also going to feather it somewhere around, you know, 20, 30%. And this time you're going to up the brightness and maybe shift the hue towards something a little bit more yellow and maybe lower the saturation as well. Um, so that way you're gonna get the effect of light hitting your leaf and it's going to make it feel just more alive, <laughs> basically. And at this point, we've done most of the work, but make sure you stick around until the end because I'm going to be showing you some easy tips to really make this leaf interesting because right now, you know, it looks good, but it's a little bit boring still. The first of these tips is to create a new layer above your leaf layer and renaming it to details. So this leaf, uh, this details layer, sorry, you might want to change the blending mode of it to linear burn or multiply. So again, just clicking on this little end. And you might also want to lower the opacity, you know, around 50% or something like that, but you can always come back and tweak it later. Now, coming back to your sketching pencils, in my case, it was the coloring pencil, and keeping your same green, you're gonna go in and outline some parts of your leaf. 
So basically we're going to use this technique to show the thickness of the leaf. You can see here it adds so much more life to it. It's just way more interesting and it's super easy. But we don't want to draw a full on outline everywhere. That's going to make your piece look like a bit more like cartoon and not super watercolor. So you're just going to pick one side and always draw your outline on the same side. And I don't mean like one half of the leaf, I mean one side of the opening. So in my case, I'm always going with the top of the opening. You might also want to draw some outlines around the veins. So nothing too complicated, but again, picking one side of each vein and then just drawing a little line. And I like to not draw it from the center of the leaf right up to the edge of the vein. I kind of draw like 50% of the way basically. And I recommend that you don't use the eraser here, that if you draw a line that you don't like, you just undo and start over again. Uh, you're gonna get lines that are more fluid and more organic. Really quick tip, if you have the watercolor brushes, go back and select your leaf layer. And with the salt brush, starting from a transparent section or a white section of your canvas, you can drag your brush and add some white speckles. So there is no similar brush that comes with Procreate, so I don't have a free alternative, but it's really just a bonus extra step. What we want to do now is to create a new layer on top of the leaf layer and below the details layer and renaming it to splatters. We're also going to change the blending mode of this one to linear burn, but we're going to keep the opacity at 100%. And with our same color, we're either going to use the splatter brush that comes with the watercolor brushes or in the spray painting section, you have this gicle brush, which looks like splatters, but is a little bit dense. And then there's the splatter brush, which I... I don't know, <laughs> I just don't know. So you can use either the GK brush or the splatter brush from the airbrushing panel, or if you have the watercolor brushes, again, you would just go with the splatter brush that comes with it. Uh, and basically here, we're just adding some splatters to amplify the watercolor effect. This is also an optional step, but I think it really helps tying in everything together. So super easy, really quick, but looks really good. Now this next step is absolutely optional, but it's going to make your Monstera leaf super trendy. I don't know if you've heard about Albo Monstera. <laughs> They're this big thing on Instagram and I'm just obsessed with them. And creating them is really easy. So you would just select your leaf layer and then again in the adjustment panel, hue, saturation, brightness, but this time selecting the pencil option. And we're going to set our brush, everyone, no matter if you have the brush set or not, to the um, medium hard blend brush so yeah medium hard blend and this is a really interesting brush you're gonna see and we're gonna set our settings to the hues right now we're gonna set it around 50 percent um we're gonna up the brightness around you know somewhere between 60 and 70 and we're going to lower the saturation around 35. we're gonna tweak those later, but we just want to make sure we're able to see what we're doing and what we're going to do and you can see here the brush is so interesting if you press really hard with your pencil it creates really hard edges and if you press very lightly it kind of becomes a smudge tool weird brush really hard to use but for this it is perfect so yeah, all Bo Monstera are basically just Monsteras that have variegation in it, so it's gonna have some white spots. And on big leaves, like Monstera leaves, it's just this crazy cool look. It looks like it has like paint splattered on it. So it's a really nice way of kind of making your leaves a little bit more interesting. If you were to draw a composition, uh, like I have in my example, I personally wouldn't draw all the leaves with variegation on it. I would just select some leaves and draw some spots on those and then leave some leaves to be purely green. But it's a really fun way to kind of make your piece a bit more interesting and a bit more personalized. And as you can see here, I'm going in and tweaking the settings as I go until I get some sort of a creamy color um yeah creamy color <laughs> and if you're curious you can google albo monstera but they have some different patterns some they are some half moon monstera leaves in which one side is going to be green and the other side is completely going to be white some other leaves might have spots that look like cow spots <laughs> some plants might even have spots that are really light, tiny speckles, kind of like a constellation. These are called actually Thai constellation. But anyway, I don't, I don't know why I'm rambling about plants. Well, I know why I'm rambling about plants because I like plants, but this is not the point of the tutorial. Basically the point here is you can just go in and add different type of spots on your leaf to make it just look so cool. That's all, that's the point. <laughs> 
And once you have something that you like, once you're happy with your pattern, you can just exit this mode by tapping back on the icon that is highlighted at the top, so the magic wand icon here. And if you've added some white, you might notice that there are a few things that you might want to kind of tweak a little bit. So personally, I like to tweak the color. So again, in the adjustment panel, hue, saturation, brightness, no selection to the entire layer. You might just want to shift the hue, the brightness and the saturation around for your entire leaf until you get something that you like. So it's a color scheme that you're happy with. It's probably not gonna be too drastic, but I think it just helps to kind of tie in together everything a little bit better. You might also want to lower the opacity of your details layer. If you have some white spots, this kind of green outline might look a little bit too intense, so you might want to dial it down a little bit. And guys, my neighbor is just starting playing some really loud music, so I hope you can't hear it. <laughs> We're almost done anyway. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to create a composition, so adding a stem or more leaves if you want. To do that, just go ahead and create a new layer. Of course, rename it to stem or leaf to whatever you desire and on this layer we're the same color we've been using so far we're going to go back to our main color brush so the dark edges watercolor or the hard uh hard brush i think from the airbrushing panel and you would draw either you know a second leaf or a stem in the case of a stem the stem of monsteras are kind of these weird things um they're super straight and then they bend and then you have the leaf <laughs> Since we're using watercolor brushes that have transparency to them, we kind of see through the leaf. And the way to avoid that is go ahead and tap on your leaf layer and then select select, which is going to select the leaf. <laughs> and then going back on your stem layer, you're going to activate mask and then you're going to invert your mask. So basically it's creating a mask on the stem layer, which has the leaf on it. So it's basically erasing the leaf on the stem layer, kind of like what we did uh, when we were drawing the veins on the leaf itself. So you could use the same technique on leaves uh, to create kind of a full monstera plant. So there you go, this was how to paint a watercolor monster leaf in Procreate. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up because believe it or not, it really does help the channel. It helps me, it helps the algorithm, it helps everything. <laughs> And I would absolutely love to see why you guys create. So make sure to share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos just like this one every single week. I'll see you soon.